Okay, so this is brand new. This is the On Second Thought podcast. I'm Jim Purdue with my wife, Stephanie Purdue. So what's our goal here? So we'll talk ministry. We'll talk marriage. We'll talk parenting. What else do you want to talk about? I don't know what I'd say. I think this is going to be good. I'm excited to be able to talk about this, some of this kind of stuff. Nobody has all the answers. We don't have all the answers, but we can kind of walk with people and um, help some folks along the way. Big smile. I'm so glad to be here with you. I'm glad to be here with you. Oh, I thought you were going to say, <laughs> okay. Nope. <laughs> we're back. Yeah. So more than 12 people listened to our inaugural episode of the On Second Thought podcast. And On Second Thought, I don't know why. I chose to name it on second thought other than Second Baptist Church because we're not having second thoughts, but we established that last time. We're excited we're to be here. Yes, we are. So after telling our story, kind of meet the Purdue's, um, what do you say we learn a little bit about our faith journeys, your faith journey and my faith journey? Sounds it, great. Because they're very different stories. They are. Yes, but both are pretty incredible because they're Jesus stories. Yes. I'll let you go first. You sure? Yeah. Ladies first. You've been saved longer than me. Okay. <laughs> Whoever <laughs> saved first goes first. Yep, yep. Okay. <laughs> Is that biblical? Save first goes know. first. <laughs> I don't know. The dead in Christ rise first. So, all oh, right. No. So I ain't ready for that. I, um... So I, I, I grew up in church. I grew up in a Christian home. Um, and, uh, faith was in front of me from really day one. So we were the family that went to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. And anytime there were any special activities, we were there every time the doors were open. Um, and we came to Second Baptist Church, uh, when I was about 10 years old, 10 or 11 years old. Um, I was in the fourth grade. And I had made a profession of faith when I was much younger, um, but have had a very vague recollection of that profession. I can remember stepping out of a Sunday school class and telling a teacher I prayed a prayer, and she said, did you ask Jesus in your heart? And I said, yes. And so I was baptized at a different church and then came here and uh, at 10 or 11 years old and, and really started to think through, you know, I had some doubts and some concerns and really started to think through, am I really saved? And so I struggled with that a little bit until um, uh, until I was probably 10 or 11 in 1989. And we had an evangelist come and he was a harvest evangelist, right? His name was Bailey Smith and Bailey saw lots and lots of people come to faith in Christ. And there was a famous sermon he preached called uh, The Wheat and the Tares. And um, I can remember just vividly thinking, I I don't know if I'm saved, but I want to make sure. I want to make sure that I have a relationship with God. Kind of drive that stake into the ground and, you know, kind of raise that flag. I know that I know that I know. And so March 15th, 1989, in an old red carpet building at Second Baptist Church on Sandy Run Road. It's no longer there. The building is the red carpet. The there. building is there, but the red carpet is no longer there. Uh, it, it, we had, we did have to recarpet. Well, we had to recarpet <laughs> after forty years, so we did just recarpet a few years ago. Um, but so I, I was saved. Now, I I still doubted my salvation after that a little bit because I would hear preachers say things like this that would confuse me. They would say. You know, um, getting saved is like your heart is a home and every door in the home has a key and every cabinet in the home has a key and a lock. And if you didn't give God all the keys, you're not saved. And that just sent me into a tailspin. I was like, I don't know if I gave God all the keys. Did I keep a key? Do I have a key for myself? Did I accidentally keep a key? So I struggled with that. You would not that. have kept it. Well, but I, I was kind of the rule follower, right? Absolutely. Especially with spiritual things. like, and, and so. Except for you don't read the pool rules. I do not read the pool rules. And sometimes I drive by grace, not by law. Especially coming home from Atlanta in bad traffic. I might break the speed limit. But when it came, when it came to the things of God, I really, wanted to, I really wanted to do that right. So I struggled with that. And I think it's important for some people to know that. 
you can be genuinely saved and still doubt from time to time. The people that say if you if if you're you know ninety nine percent sure you're a hundred percent lost, that is not in the Bible. Um, First John was written to believers who had doubts and concerns about their faith. And so um, I did have some doubts, but really kind of had some confirmations. Um, and later, talking to my parents helped me out a little bit. Like one night, I think I was struggling, and my mom looked at me and said, Jim, you're saved. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if that's what I, I felt like. That, that Maybe that's what I needed uh, in that moment. She'd seen that fruit in my life, but I just wanted to make sure I got it right. And so... Could I have been saved when I was five or six years old? It's possible. The Bible says childlike faith is what it takes, right? So sometimes we get it confused and we think it's it's adult-like understanding, but really God says it's childlike faith. So I could have been saved when I was five or six, but I know for sure I nailed it down um, when I was 11 years old. And so I um, I have a story that's a, a, a little unique in that um, not that I always followed Jesus and it was always perfect, but probably around my seventh or eighth grade year, I was like, it's time to get serious about my faith. And so between seventh and eighth grade is the, is the time I was like, I really want to commit to following Jesus and be a leader. So I started being a leader in the youth group. And, and it was a few years later that God called me to ministry when I was still in high school. They were already calling me preacher boy when I was in high school in the locker room of the football team. They'd apologize if they cussed around me, you know, I mean, just, I don't think they would do that anymore, but, um, it was just it was just a unique thing, right? Like people knew that I was a follower of Jesus and that God had called me to ministry. And so um, by the time I was 16 or 17 years old, I knew that that was my path and went up to the University of Georgia, which is basically like Babylon, you know, wicked, sinful place, but became a youth pastor at the age of 19 and and uh, went off to seminary, met you. So yes. Jesus and Stephanie changed my life. There we go. Amen. I know. I love to tell people like the part of your testimony that is so great is that you've lived a life of faithfulness. And so you don't come back and say, well, my testimony is God saved me from all of these awful sins and I've had to live with all the consequences. I feel like your testimony is one of God's faithfulness in your life, like of obedience. And like that is a, a great testimony. Like that's the testimony I want for my children and for the youth. It's you know, that we teach on the weekends. Like, yeah, that's I, a strong testimony. I don't want people to think, oh, I never did anything wrong. Well, I and I try saying, not yeah. to say that because we all are sinful, but to have a testimony of not being wayward. Yeah, I think sometimes, too, it's important to, to um, for, for someone like me, you have to realize that just like, you know, people that have these crazy testimonies of all the things like somebody like me, I have to realize that my goodness can't get me to heaven. No matter I was raised in church and, you know, at church all the time and in all these activities and all these plays and trying to get the lead role in Fat Fat Jehoshaphat, which I did back in the day. Mm -hmm. I was Fat Fat Jehoshaphat. Weren't you Jesus and the Redeemer's? I was Jesus and the Redeemer skit and did all the things, you know, but, but you still have to repent and believe. Like, Sometimes you have to repent of what you think is your own goodness, which is actually sin, right? You have to repent of, you know, my own efforts to earn favor with God, or of course that's a sin and, and, and of sin to, to be saved. And so I think that's important for people to understand too, is like you talk to people and they're like, uh, how long you been a Christian? I've been a Christian my whole life. No, you haven't. There's nobody that's born a follower of Jesus, right? A Christian. Um, what is it? God don't have grandchildren, you know? So just because you're born in a garage doesn't make you a Ford. I a- hope not amen. a Ford. Amen. <laughs> just because just cause you're born at the bakery don't mean you're a loaf of bread? Well, yeah. I mean, some people, I mean, all of our children were born, have been in church before they were born. So, yeah. But they're still dirty, rotten sinners and need a Savior. They are. Amen. Yes. That's a whole different story. About so, our kids being sinners? Yeah. Oh, there's lots of stories. Well, I mean, <laughs> yes. Sinners well, and just like you their knew, parents. but I mean, and I also think that the Lord, you know, you knew at a young age that you were going to be a pastor. Yeah. So there's an accountability there. Um, that answered a lot that. of questions, you know. So going into Georgia, knowing I'm going to be a pastor, and then knowing that that's just that four years is just a step to what's next. Um, and so I, it, it it did lead me 
you know, kind of not being an idiot during my teenage years. And I'm not saying I don't want anyone to think I'm saying that I never did anything wrong. That's not at all what I'm saying. But um, trying to keep the faith and persevere led me to be able to, you know, when I was 19, be a youth pastor. And, and I, I feel like, I don't know, maybe I'd have had those chances in Bible college, but following God's will for my life to go to Georgia opened up some pathways where I could serve in ministry at a really young age. Yep. Amen. Been doing Amen. it ever since. You have. How about you your have. story? My story. I'd love to hear your it's story. It's like the total opposite of your story. It's not the total opposite. Either. <laughs> you, you have Well, at some... the ending, it all, you know, it all works out. That's so. right. Well, yours is more of a, I got saved before when I was younger, before I was 18. So I always like to start my testimony by saying, like, statistically speaking, I shouldn't be here because you hear all of the statistics that people always say. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, I shouldn't be a believer in Jesus. I definitely shouldn't be married to a pastor. And I, I mean, I guess I could have five kids, but I wouldn't have these five kids. Because what are the statistics? It's like b well, beyond it's, the age of 18, it's like less than 10%. Yeah, only 6% of adult Christians made their decision to follow Christ after 18. Yeah. So that means 94% made their decision as children, more mm -hmm. like you. And, um, but I have to know that, you know, God was writing a totally different story for me. And I can remember, as we said before, I can remember you being in high school and I can remember seeing you. But I also, um, I wasn't really introduced to Jesus until I was 21. Yeah. I mean, I have a faith sprinkling, I guess, throughout my childhood, but it wasn't a consistent go to church every weekend. It wasn't a consistent church um, with your grandma here and there. Yeah. And so it was just, I mean, we were good people, but it wasn't, um, we weren't at church every time the doors opened. It just wasn't a part of like my growing up. So I guess what I want to always encourage like adults or parents of children who haven't been saved at a young age is that you're never too old to have life change and that mm -hmm. Jesus can be working. You know, I can look back in my life and I could see now that he was working, like that he was protecting me. There was grace there. Like he knew my life path. I just didn't know it at that point. So, I mean, as a little girl, I obviously knew Jesus loves me. And I can say, you know, thankfully that I was taught stuff like that when I was younger. Um, I was like most people without Jesus. I really didn't think I was a bad person. In fact, I could find people that were... um doing things worse than me yeah so there was always that comparison of well i could please people you know i made good grades i did the right things i wasn't a bad person um you said even in high school before you knew jesus you would wish or hope that people would invite you to prayer club or fca or something like that i do and i tell because i teach 12th grade girls at the church i have a very distinct memory of being at houston county high school and seeing a group of girls and they were all going to prayer club. And I would get, I remember them like in my head going, I wish they would ask me. But I mean, we established this in one of our podcasts that I don't have the nicest face. And I probably you didn't have, have it. I probably face. didn't have that at Houston County either. So I wasn't like the girl <laughs> that was like, oh, I'm going to go invite her. So I try and encourage people. I love your to, face. <laughs> thanks. So I try and encourage people say okay. to say <laughs> To reach out to the people that don't look like they would want to go. Right. Like, take them anyway. At least ask know. them. You, you don't know. know. You don't know who's watching, and you don't know who um, may have that desire, but they could be super introverted, and they're not going to take themselves. Right. So, um, back to, you know, I just, as a teenager, um, I still didn't know Christ, and then I went to the University of Georgia, and I did not know Jesus um, however, I had some close friends who had come to second. They had gotten saved through the rec ministry here through yeah. a victory. Sport. It wasn't victory sports then, but it is. That's what we call it now. And, um, they had gotten saved here and they were some of my very good friends. And it was at a very low point in my life when I was at Georgia that I reached out to them and, he, the Lord had allowed me to reach the end of myself and I really could only look to him and I started reaching out to them and they were able to show me because we had a similar past. So they were able to show me what God had done in their life 
what forgiveness looked like because I felt like for me, I had not done all the right things. I had not, I didn't even know the right things to, to do. And they were able to show me that there was true life in a relationship with Jesus and what that looked like. And for a long time, I would ask questions and um, they just were like, you're not going to be perfect. Your life is not going to be perfect, but you will be made perfect through Christ um, and everything would be changed. So I remember coming to Second Baptist on December the 10th, many, many years ago, and Pastor Gary was doing Christmas. It was a Christmas choir. It thing, was the right? Christmas choir thing. And he stood up there and I can see it as clear as day. And he's like, do you know him? Do you know him in your head or do you know him in your heart? And I was like, I don't know. And I went home that entire week and I just asked every question because I truly wanted to know him in my heart. And um, I remember I like prayed every night that Jesus would be the Lord of my life and I'd give him my whole life and that he would be in control of my life. And when I finally came to church the next week and I walked down it was a hot mess express. I was crying and they were like, you are saved. You only have to be saved one time. And I was like, are you sure? Yes. So anyway, didn't the pastor say, yes, Hey, have you, yes. have you prayed to ask Jesus in your heart yes. or in your life? And you're like, yeah, every day this week. Yeah. Every day or this something week. Like that. Yes. Like the, yes. So, oh, yes. Okay. Well, you're good. Yeah. Right? They're we like, you're you good. You're good. And so I think there was such a relief, like, and I was overwhelmed that I had been changed and that I understood I was a sinner, that I needed a savior. I understood that he had died for me. And I think that he, I also needed to know that he would never leave me or forsake me yeah. at that point in my life. And I knew that I was a new creation and that everything had been changed. And it was night and day. I left in December at the University of Georgia and I went back in January and I was a totally different person. Yeah. Um, So it was just, and the Lord has changed me even more. I mean, every day I would, I can remember going back to Georgia and I was hungry for the word. I did Bible study after Bible study and it was a rapid growth for me. Complete and total change. Can I, can I ask you a question? This may put you on the spot a little bit, but we can may, edit it if you, I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> we may not, you may not know the answer. Yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds to me like in your life, the first time you really heard the gospel and understood the gospel, you responded to the gospel. Would you say that that is the first time you heard and understood yeah. the gospel? Oh, absolutely. You yeah. responded. Yeah. Um, and I know that doesn't happen with everybody, but it sounds like that December 2000, mm -hmm. December 10th, 2000 was really the first time you understood and heard the message of the gospel. It makes me wonder, like, how many people are out there living their lives, thinking they're doing fine and don't even know what they need or don't need. And, and you were at a low point, but they may or may not be there. there are a lot of people facing low points, but people may or may not be in a low point, but maybe just sometimes sharing the gospel. There's that person out there somewhere that the first time they hear and understand, it just clicks. And the Holy Spirit says, yes, this is, this is it. This is absolutely what you need. Now, clearly, there are other times we share with people consistently and continually. It takes a long time. But I still think there are others like you that just, boom, that moment, it was just. Well, and gone. I had to come to a realization that there was nothing more I could do on my own. Mm -hmm. Like, I like to be in control of things. Shocker. I know. I'm very surprised. But, I, I mean, I knew that I had done a terrible job being in control of my own life and that the Lord was just. Gun, he was just so good to me and I needed to know that he would always be there. Um, and I had people explain it to me Yeah, and, and I fell more in love with Jesus every day. And I was out of town and got to be home oh, yeah. on December 24th yep. when, when you were baptized in the red carpet building in the red, not anymore, but you know, the red <laughs> carpet building back then. So yeah. the old sanctuary at, worship center at second baptist church so and i remember that and I, who knew like december 24th 2000 that i got to see you baptized and here we would be today yep on second thought podcast episode two yep well 
I mean, and I think because we've done for the past couple of years at the church, we've done who's your one. And I think we all have a one. Should. Yeah. I mean, we all there's a one in our life. And I mean, this is my story and that's your story. But we all have a story and God's not finished with that. Yeah, that's a great point. Who does God have in your life, in your sphere of influence that needs to know Jesus? And he's put you there for a reason. You're so smart. Uh, well, and, and pretty. Thanks. Hey. Okay. I'm pretty too. All right. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> do we want to do some more rapid fire questions? Are people you like these rapid fire do they really? questions. How do you yeah. know people like them? Well, Let me they just like tell me. Like I think they like your answers. Do you kill bugs you find inside or do you take them outside? I kill bugs. I kill bugs. You kill bugs. Yes, bugs die. I scream Especially when I the see ones bugs. That make Stephanie scream. <laughs> there and there are like almost every bug will make Stephanie scream. So we, they bugs die. What do I hate the oh, most? Roaches, roaches. <laughs> because if you see one roach, there's a thousand other ones. Hey, can you spell onomatopoeia? You're the wind beneath my wings. I can spell onomatopoeia. Do you know how I notice how to spell onomatopoeia? I know that's the reason why I'm asking you. Why? Because you know how to spell onomatopoeia. We had to spell it in English class in high school, and I, I made it into a song with Old MacDonald. O-N-O-M-A-T-O-P-O-E-I-A. It's, that's how you spell it. <laughs> onomatopoeia. And I got it right. There Otherwise, it's a weird word to spell. Absolutely. Yeah. How do you usually answer the telephone? How do I answer the telephone? Hello? Hello? I answer the telephone like Adele. Hello? Hello? <laughs> What's the other answer to that? How do people normally? I don't know. Like, do they that say, was a question. It said it Talk asked. to me. Yo. That's, <clears throat> I'm going to start doing that. Is your bed made right now? I haven't been home all day, but I don't think so. <laughs> we, used, we used to have a rule. Like, we did. Last one out makes the bed, and that never really worked. So, it didn't. No. So you, you have kind of a philosophy of why am I going to make this bed if I'm going to get back in it later? But I grew up in Mary Purdue's house, and we made the beds and did all the things. <laughs> It gets made sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> okay. Okay. On second thought, we'll catch you next time. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to On Second Thought today. We are so grateful for your time. You can go to our website, secondfamily.church slash thoughts, and let us know your comments, your thoughts, and any complaints go directly to Stephanie. All right. God bless you guys. Have a great day.